The suite of quality management exposure drafts includes a new firm level, level standard, namely ISQM2. This presentation in the series aims at providing an overview of the requirements included in ED ISQM2. In terms of a background to the new standard, perhaps this is the most visible change from the IWSB's project on quality management, in that it's resulted in the drafting of a separate standard. High value is placed on the role that the engagement quality reviewer plays with an engagement by stakeholders. A separate standard was proposed in an attempt to emphasize the importance of the engagement quality review. It's also seen as a means to address concerns around the extant quality management standard not being scalable, as well as a mechanism for expanding on the requirements and the application material. The objectives of the project to develop ISQM2 included the following. Setting more robust criteria for firms to apply when determining which engagements should be subject to an EQR. Establishing the objective of an EQR. Clarifying the nature, timing and extent, as well as enhancing the requirements for the eligibility of individuals who perform the review. In line with the objectives of the project, ISQM1 includes the requirements in relation to the appointment and eligibility for the EQR, as well as the engagement quality reviewer's responsibility relating to performing and documenting an EQR. The requirements in terms of engagement subject to an EQR remain within ISQM1. The proposal included in ISQM1 is that a firm is required to perform EQR for audits of financial statements of listed entities, audits of financial statements of entities that a firm determines are of significant public interest, that being the new category that has been added, and lastly, audits or other engagements which an EQR is required by law or regulation or where the firm determines that an EQR is an appropriate response to assessed quality risks based on the reasons for the assessment given to those risks. In terms of the overview of ISQM2, an EQR is a firm level response to identified and assessed quality risks. The response is implemented by the EQR on behalf of the firm. ISQM2 is clear in stating that the performance of the EQR does not reduce the responsibility of the engagement partner for achieving quality on the engagement, nor does it change the nature, timing and extent of the procedures that need to be performed by the engagement team. Another important point to note is the interaction between ISQM1, ISQM2 and ED220. As already indicated, ISQM1 retained the requirements for engagement subject to the EQR. ISQM2 now includes the requirements in relation to the appointment and eligibility of the EQR and the related responsibilities. With ED220 dealing with the requirements applicable to the engagement partner's responsibility in relation to the EQR. In terms of the eligibility for the engagement quality reviewer, ISQM2 indicates that the firm shall establish policies and procedures that set forth the criteria for the eligibility to be appointed as the EQR. Such policies or procedures must include limitations on the eligibility of an individual to be appointed as engagement quality reviewer for an engagement on which the individual previously served as the engagement partner. Such firm policies or procedures should include the following criteria to be applied in evaluating whether the individual to be appointed as the EQR is eligible for such appointment. Such firm policies or procedures must include the following criteria to be applied in evaluating whether in the, the individual to be appointed as the EQR is eligible for that appointment. This person is not a member of the engagement team, has the competence, capabilities, sufficient time and appropriate authority to perform the EQR. 
complies with the relevant ethical requirements and this includes that any threats to objectivity relating to the engagement or the engagement team are eliminated or reduced to an acceptable level. And lastly, comply with the requirements of law or regulation, if any, that are relevant to the eligibility of the EQR. In terms of the EQR responsibilities, in initial communication from the IWSB in relation to the IISQM2 project, it was indicated that there was a strong message that EQR should be undertaken at appropriate points in time throughout the engagement and not just at the end of the engagement right before the report is due to be issued. In response to this, ISQM2 requires that the engagement quality reviewer performs procedures at appropriate points in time during the engagement to provide an appropriate basis for an objective evaluation of the significant judgments made by the engagement team, as well as the conclusions reached thereon. You will see that ISQM2 is not prescriptive in terms of what is considered to be appropriate points in time. Rather, the application material indicates that the timing of the procedures performed may depend on the nature and the circumstances of the engagement. It continues to state that the timely review of the engagement documentation by the EQR at appropriate points in time throughout all stages allows significant matters to be promptly resolved to the EQR's satisfaction. This may also reinforce the engagement team application of professional judgment as well as the exercise of professional skepticism in performing the engagement. The objective of the EQR is to provide an objective evaluation of the significant judgments made by the engagement team and conclusions reached thereon. In my view, ISQM2 provides little guidance in identifying areas where significant judgments have been made. The application material relating to significant matters and significant judgment merely refers to examples provided in ED220 of significant judgments and the engagement partner's responsibility to review audit documentation relating to these. ISQM2 continues to indicate that for engagements other than audits, i.e. where the reference back to ED220 is not applicable, the EQR may consider the nature and circumstances of the engagement in identifying significant matters and significant judgments made by the engagement team. In concluding, it is envisaged that the introduction of a separate firm level standard relating to quality management will increase the prominence and emphasize the importance of the EQR. Furthermore, it is believed that the separate standard, ISQM2, will enhance scalability in that the standard is only applicable to those engagements within the firm that qualify for the engagement quality review. With this, I thank you.